see if you'd pick the rabbits. I'm glad they lost. Me too. As if you'd pick the uh, cowboys here, Dan. Yeah, probably gonna eat this one. Yeah. Oh, well. <laughs> Again! <laughs> well, at least Manly lost. Yeah. Mm. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Rugby League Outlaws brought to you by our great friends at Top Sport, onelittlefootyfan.com.au and the Stubby Club. Don't forget to like and subscribe to everybody. Dan, big weekend of footy. Rep round coming up, Terry. Yeah, not a fan. Not a fan. Not a fan. I love rep round. This is a genuine highlight for me. Every year, women's origin gets better year on year. This, of course, we can get internationals for the first time in two, three seasons, and I cannot wait looking at that Tongan side, the New Zealand side. Oh, I cannot wait, Terry. This is the weekend for me where I just like literally do not turn the TV on until Sunday night and I just refresh and recharge and get myself away from rugby league. For the run home, oh, I hate this wraparound. Just, I, I, I can't see anything. What are you talking about, Terry? Well, I mean, I think it's a pointless exercise. There's, 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 no, there's, there's no reason for it. They're not playing for any trophies or they're not, they're not in a tri-series or a six-team series or anything like that and it's, the competition isn't shut down. And you watch, mark my words, I guarantee it, someone's going to get severely injured in one of these games and then everyone's going to blow up and go, well, it was a pointless friendly, why is it playing? And I agree with that. It's a pointless friendly, it shouldn't be played. Don't like it. Don't care. Don't like it at all. Now, it's worth remembering that the World Cup's at the end of the year. This is a genuine selection. You know, these teams, these countries don't get five or six games in the build-up. Neither so, do Australia. They don't need it, to be fair. The emerging sides, like Tonga and Samoa, are one or two superstar players away from pushing the top 10 nations. I think these fixtures are a real highlight and absolutely required. You pick the best Australian team against the best Tongan team, and Australia will beat them by 30 every time. Tonga beat us last time we played. Yeah, I know. That's why I said the best Australian team. They didn't really do anything. It was the best Australian team at the time. Now, I agree with you that the kangaroo side is far superior. And you guess because Jerome Luai is probably third or fourth in line at best. He's Samoa's best choice at 5'8". That says yeah. it all. But they don't get better unless they play these kinds of games. Yeah, so, I mean, for me to take an interest of... Like, I look at the teams there, okay... Whatever, there's no halves in there. If Jerome Luai doesn't get, you know, like, as you said, he's got to go and play for Samoa and they look good, he's probably going to get picked in the 25-man Australian squad. No, possibly. I just think that the best way for these teams to keep emerging are these fixtures, and I'm excited. Dan, I want to bring up something with you that I feel you and I uh, bring up every couple of weeks, and that's the bunker interference. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, I'm, I'm taking this from the Cronulla viewpoint here. But, uh, <laughs> but Jesse Ramian, you know, the, a penalty was called for him getting up to play the ball. They pushed him. The bunker intervened. Ramian's, you know, pushed back with his arm twice. I thought he was just trying to get the guy off him. Um, unfortunately, made contact. The bunkers turned around and said, well, that's a penalty. Now, Ramian hasn't been charged for it. It wasn't even fine. There was the hip drop from Trindle last week. There was the uh, Felice Cafusi who went to the judiciary and they were like, you're absolutely right. There's nothing to charge you with. You're free to play. And now there's Matt Burton, Alex Twal. Yeah, I going back to the original, the Ramian thing, it happens 15 times in a game. Yeah. Melbourne do it six times every set. Yeah. It's a tactic. You push and you throw every limb about. You're not trying to hit him. No. Now, he did hit him. He did hit him. But if they're going to penalise that, there's going to be 50 penalties every single week and that's not what the game is about. Mm -hmm. I can see why he penalised him, because an elbow struck the face. But Ramian wasn't looking at him, and he was doing this. Get, get away, get away. Yeah. It's not like he looked up and thought, all right, bang. Very hard to elbow a bloke from the bottom and do significant damage. Yeah, like that. You've, you've literally got no power there. Now, Paul Vaughan um, against the, uh, the Tigers was absolutely outstanding. But you watch, every time he gets tackled, he's straight on his back, he's wrestling, and then as he's getting up, limbs are going everywhere. Incidental contact, nothing. Yeah, more. it's... I mean, I love this captain's challenge, but I just think that they're too nitpicky on it. Mm -hmm. You know, they're, 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 they go looking for things. It's the same as now with this, you blow the try and then you've got 90 seconds. If, if a try looks like it was a hard to score try, they go looking for reasons not to give it. Everything looks worse in slow motion yeah. too, much worse. I've always had a bugbear with uh, double movements and yeah. momentum because you slow it down and you can't, Completely stop. Yeah. Now, a lot of the times there is the obvious promotion. But, yeah, I agree. I think the bunker is looking for reasons to mm. intervene where it should be 
only if the referee said, hey, look, I think we need to have a look here. Yeah. But it's, uh, the, the other thing is, well, and I'm surprised it didn't get overturned, and I thought it would, but Jake Averillo's second try. Kiraz from the Bulldogs takes the bomb. Uh, he's on his way down, and you can see he's offloading, but his arm hits the ground, yeah. right? So his arm hits the ground. Technically, it's a dead tackle, but it's in the one motion of the offload. And Avrilo toes the ball ahead. It's the, a try scored. Now, Ben Cummins awarded the try, and he said, but go and have a look because I think his arm touched the ground. Yep. The bunker used common sense there to say that he was offloading in one motion. But then in other times, they do these ridiculous penalties and... Split second. Yeah, yeah. I, could, I can see that getting pulled back. Next I could week. see it definitely getting pulled back. There's a definite frustration there. Yeah. Absolutely agree. Now, Terry, I'm going to take us on a little bit of a journey. A journey. It here. is a rep round, so there's not as much to talk about this week. Thank God. I want to throw some controvert. I want to throw some controversial opinions out. You know, I want some back. Okay. Three, quick fire. Let's discuss. Let's cause some controversy, Terry. You can start. Number one for me. If you said you can pick any halfback in the competition, I'm taking Jerome Hughes over Nathan Cleary. You took the words right out of my mouth there. I think... I was aiming for controversy. Yeah, I'm, I'm not, I'm not um, disregarding Nathan Cleary in any way, shape or form. I think he should have had a Dalian medal. He's got the Clive Churchill medal. Did he deserve it? I'm not too sure, but he's a fantastic halfback. Yeah. But for mine, we've seen, we like we've seen Nathan Cleary in a Penrith team in 2018, 2019 that weren't the best, and he struggles, and you know he plays a lot off the back foot of the the Penrith team and how incredible they are at the moment. We've seen Jerome Hughes take the storm without Cam Munster, without Ryan Pappenhausen, and still belt teams. Mm -hmm. I absolutely, if you gave me the choice between 25-year-old Nathan Cleary and 25-year-old Jerome Hughes, I'm going to take Jerome Hughes. Yep, well, there we go. Let's see. Let's see if other people agree. But going back to Jerome Hughes, he wins the big games. Now, Cleary did win a grand final, but what was the, the play that won the game? It was an intercept. Whereas Jerome Hughes was absolutely brutal against the Panthers the year before. Mm -hmm. Arguably the second or third best player on the field after Pappenhausen. So... So now, land. my controversial opinion comes with Ryan Pappenhausen, as you just said there, and if you gave me the opportunity to pick any fullback in the game, I'm picking Ryan Pappenhausen. I think he's the best fullback in the game at the moment over James Tedesco. He's the most complete fullback. Mm -hmm. He can do it all. Now, I still think Tedesco's probably got the runs on the board, but I'm, I'm, I'm not here to argue with you, Terry. I don't hate it. The only thing for mine that's stopping Ryan Pappenhausen at the moment is his injuries, and I think it's because he's slight of frame, those knocks that, you know, Teddy with a big body, Turbo, well, except for this year, they can generally take a little bit more punishment, whereas if you get Pappenhausen and you give him a bit of a, you know, bit of a throw around, he's out for a couple of weeks. Um, but, yeah, for mine, Ryan Pappenhausen is the best fullback, and this year was the best player in the game until he got hurt. Completely fair. Mm -hmm. Now, we saw the Sharks this week take a home game to Coffs Harbour, and mm -hmm. it just, the rewards are reaped. Mm -hmm. You know, there's, it was a sellout. The Sharks yep. continue their sellout spree of home games. I think that each team should be forced to take one home game away each year for this exact reason. Now, Cronulla did it voluntarily, and I think we've got to deal with them. But I think there's some real credence in saying to every team, you must take a game out of your home state. Yeah, regionally. Well, uh, not so much out of your own state, because, you know, Cronulla went to Coffs Harbour, which is six hours up the road. But I, I do think, like, you know, Penrith take a game to Bathurst. Mm -hmm. For whatever reason, the Eels take a game to Darwin every year yeah, and get, get flogged. And they play the Cowboys. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I, I, I do agree with you that you get 12 home games, right? And, and I know that there's the selfish members that turn around and go, well, I, play for, I pay for my 12 home games. And I get that. And I have been one of those in the past. Yeah. But I do see that when we have gone on these road trips four games away when we went to adelaide we went to torpo in mm -hmm. new zealand um, i went on these trips they were fun mm -hmm. very, very so fun. i would i would suggest that whilst i wouldn't force it should be you know the nrl should be encouraging you to take a game regionally or interstate or you know to the south of new zealand anyway yeah love it yeah i'm with you on there now speaking of new zealand I, I keep hearing this sob story about them and this great story that they're going home. I don't think they saved the competition, Dan. The NRL continues with or without the Warriors. Yeah. I 100% agree. In saying that, I think for them to say, well, base in Redcliffe was pretty... It, was good. it felt good in here. It's feel good, but they didn't save the competition. We can stop with that narrative now. The NRL has introduced the next year, mm -hmm. and there's 17 teams. Now, 17 teams equals a buy. 
If the Warriors said we're not basing ourselves in Australia, we're going home to New Zealand, the NRL just turns around and goes, cool, no worries. No pay, no play, or no play, no pay, whatever, however you want to say it. Um, and we play with 15 teams. Technically, you're right. I am I right. Can't, I can't argue with that as much as I want to. I don't think we should look past how big the sacrifice the players did make because if the Warriors pull the plug, okay, the competition continues, but Reese Walsh becomes, what, a free agent? Fair enough. That's what happens when you sign with the Warriors. That's true. And thirdly for me, Terry, mm. I'm pretty confident that most people agree on this. Mm. Origin means more than the World Cup. Yeah, probably, but the reason for that is just advertising. It shouldn't. Yeah. The, 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 playing for the Kangaroos should be the pinnacle. Yeah. Right? But we see Jerome Luai, and I hate to go back here again, playing for New South Wales. He won't make the Kangaroos squad. No. He's, he said he'll play for Samoa. You know, and I back that. Players that don't make the Kangaroos should. But he always said the pinnacle is to play Origin. Luke Keery wanted to play Origin. They don't mention the Kangaroos. I think that needs to change. Absolutely, it does. But... Yeah. As it stands, that's not the way it is. Yeah, but I mean, if you have a look at the marketing and the spend of the marketing that the NRL, because I mean, the NRL has to release their financials, mm -hmm. right? If you have a look at the amount of money they put into marketing for State of Origin as opposed to marketing for test matches, it's ridiculous. For mine, you're right, the World Cup, like, imagine the, uh, you know, in, in soccer or football, if they turn around and said that the World Cup wasn't the biggest event, but it was the League of Nations. Yeah. That would, yeah. yeah. It's not the way it should be. Absolutely not the way it should be. But it is. Now, my final call on here, Dan, is I actually started getting into the NRLW last year and um, I watched the grand final this year and I thought it was absolutely incredible. Um, I feel, though, with the talent pool, because if you have a look every year at the teams coming last, they're generally last by a long shot. Mm -hmm. Now they've added four teams. I feel, two teams, uh, I feel four teams was too many. Two teams is probably the perfect number. And then you add the two teams for the 2023 season, or 2024 season. There's definitely a line of thinking. I don't necessarily, I, I agree with the way you think. I would argue though that it's worth the teething issues. Okay, mm. the Sharks come in and, and if we lose every game, whatever. To get them in gets us as fans. Oh, we'll be financial members. Yep. We'll join the second it comes out. And, you know, we both got daughters that will look up to, to such players. So I think that, yes, you are right, technically, but I think it's a risk worth taking. Yeah, look, there's a, in every decision that you make, there's, there is a risk worth, worth taking, as you said. But, I mean, even now for mine with the NRL, I think that they're, they're introducing the too quickly because if you have a look at the Tigers, uh, the Warriors, even the Dogs, I know they've scraped a couple of wins, the Knights now as well. All these teams are starting to fall apart. The, the talent pool is not there. Mm. And, you know, the, you're hearing and crowing from the Tigers fans going, well, our juniors are coming, our juniors are coming. There's just not enough talent at the moment. Don't disagree with that. Let us know what you think. Dan, Dan, Dan. Talk to me, Terry, Terry, Terry. The Blue Squad, breaking news, it's just dropped. As it's happening, wow, okay. And, uh, any, any standouts? Any Five players have been dropped and Jack White and ruled out with COVID. COVID, yeah, we saw that coming. Yeah, so James Tedesco, captain. Uh, Angus Crichton is, is uh, recalled. Apicorosau, Apicor Brian Toto, Cameron Murray, Clint Gafferson. He's there for squad, don't worry about that. Damien Cook, Daniel Tupo. Yeah, Tupo should be out of car. As a... Uh, as a EO. <laughs> Jake Travoyevich. Oh, yeah, if you need an enforcer. Uh, Jerome Luai. Uh, speaking of enforcers, Jordan McLean. Is he still playing? I don't think so. Um, Joseph Swali, Junior Paulo, Liam Martin, Matt Burton comes in uh, probably in the centres, Nathan Cleary, Nico, uh, sorry, Nico, Nico Hines, uh, Payne Haas, Cece Vitalikai, Stephen Crichton, and Victor Radley. Radley, that feels like another future. Yeah, that's a squad. I don't know what to make of that squad. Now, we did hear rumours earlier that Jake Tavoy, which would come in. Uh, the Blues need an enforcer. I don't, I don't quite think he fits the... Uh, the bill. No. I love the Talakai in as a unashamed Talakai fan. I don't know if I'd be playing a bench without any recognised props. And that, you can't tell me Jordan McLean's getting in that side. Well, I mean... He's probably going to name Paul Owen has to start, but one of them's going to the bench. Travojevic has to start. Yeah, Jake Tolman will definitely start the game. Uh, look, I think for mine, the biggest uh, omission from that is Regan Campbell-Gillard. 
I thought he was yeah. one of New South Wales' best props. He was a monster. I, I don't I don't get it. Tarek Sim's gone? Yeah, he had to go. I don't like Liam Martin surviving because he made like 38 metres. If you're 31. Drop, 31. Jesus. Freddie Fittler. Between Martin and uh, Jake Tolman, there's going to be some absolute metres coming Oh, out. yeah, big metre eating. I'll tell you what, Talakai's going to have to make 500 metres off the bench. I don't, he probably will. I don't hate this side. Look, Tony Staggs is a big out. I thought he was... Pretty dire in Origin One, so I don't I don't hate that at all. Burton coming in now. Crichton had to start. Thank you know heavens he was selected. He and Toto on that wing is just they're wrecking balls. You know Frizzell overlooked maybe the HIA earlier this week. Necessitated that's that. probably a good thing as well though. Like Tyson Frizzell hasn't been informed for about five years. Look, that's true. I mm, Freddie Filler. You know the rumours are that he's going to the Bulldogs. One foot out the door. Is he even trying? I hope not. Blues by 50. Terry. Talk to me, Dan. It's time to hear what the guru has brought us this week. Mate, all yours. G'day, boys. Thanks for having me on once again. I'm sure it was a cracking weekend with your Cronulla Sharks getting a sneaky W against the Gold Coast Titans up there at Coffs Harbour. Now, let's dive into some news from around the league. We mentioned a couple of weeks ago that you would see a Canberra Raiders player who had been there for a number of years leave, leave the club. It was, of course, Sam Williams. Uh, he left this week, which frees up a roster spot for the Canberra Raiders. I'm hearing they're in the market for a hooker, so keep an eye on that. Also on the Canberra Raiders, obviously they lost... Adam Elliott about two weeks ago. Now, the devastating thing about this for the Canberra Raiders is, one, they wanted to keep him. Two, the main reason why they weren't able to keep him was because him and his girlfriend, Millie Boyle, the Daly M medalist in the NRLW last year, they wanted to be able to play at the same club. It's been very tough for them, Millie being in Brisbane, Adam being down there at the Canberra Raiders. That's why they signed with the Newcastle Knights. Now, of course, two weeks later, the NRL announces that the Canberra Raiders will have an NRLW side. So the Canberra Raiders, as a franchise are filthy over this one because they really wanted to keep Adam Elliott. And I'm hearing that Elliott would have been more than happy to stay if they had an NRLW team for Millie Boyle, which, of course, now they do. So the timing there is devastating for the Canberra Raiders. We've got Brett Brown coming our way this week. Going to be very, very exciting. Just going to give you a couple of guys that I think are worth watching. The first one is from Tonga. Now, they have named Katoni Staggs in the 5'8 jersey. I believe he will be picked for Brad Fittler's Blues over the next 24 hours or so. So you'll be able to, you, you'll know that before I do, of course. The teams will be out by then. But assuming that Katoni Staggs is going to play for the New South Wales Blues, which I'm hearing he will, that means that there's a spot open in the halves for Tonga. Now, they've got a young bloke sitting on their extended bench, on their extended squad at the moment, named Isaiah Katoa. Now, you might remember the name. He actually signed with the Dolphins a couple of months ago. He's been playing at Barker College down here in Sydney. A very, very talented ball player. The younger brother of Sianni Katoa, former Canterbury hooker. Uh, Isaiah is a top-shelf bloke as well. I can tell you that... Wayne Bennett identified him, saw some highlights, liked the look of him, asked to have a Zoom call with him to get to know him, spent 20 minutes with him and told his recruitment officer, Peter O'Sullivan, go down there and if you think this kid is as good as he looks, sign him immediately. And of course, they've managed to snatch him from the Penrith Panthers. Now, they went on to win the SG ball this year, the Penrith Panthers. No shock, they do it every few years. But Isaiah Katoa, he was the absolute star of that team. I think he will make his first class debut. It's not an NRL game, obviously. He'll play this international for Tonga. Keep an eye on him because it wouldn't shock me if he is the Dolphins halfback or 5'8 come round one. I'm sure that wasn't the plan, but when you look at how it's playing out at the moment, he just might be. Personally, I think this kid's going to be a real star of the future, and I think he'll be a leader for Dolphins in the years to come. Another guy to watch is Ronald Volkman from Samoa. We've been talking about him on our podcast and page for quite some time. He went to Waverley College down here in Sydney, a very, very talented ball player. You would have seen him on Saturday night make his debut for the New Zealand Warriors, left the Rooster system, went over there, did pretty well, got targeted a little bit. He is a good defender, but Liam Martin coming at him and the way that they isolated him one-on-one -on -one made his life very tough. But you could see in a couple of touches just how silky he is. Obviously, playing the Penrith Panthers in your debut game, a pretty damn tough gig. Keep an eye on Ronald Volkman this week for Samoa and Isaiah Katoa for the Tongan side. Personally, I think these two will be stars of the future. He's goes here to the grounds, guru. Yeah, certainly does. Good stuff. Now, Dan. Yes, Terry. Our friend Kate's back. Ah. Cowboy Kate is back, and she's uh, going to make me eat my words. She certainly is. I pick Manly. What have you got for us, Kate? 
Hello guys, nice to be on the pod with you again this week. It was actually a really exciting week for both our clubs as the Cowboys as well as the Sharkies, Tigers and the Raiders were all announced as the new teams for the 2023 NRL Premiership, which is exciting, taking the total teams next year in the comp to 10. Personally, I love the graphic that the Cowboys used to accompany their announcement. It shows the Gold Stars captain, Romy Teitzel, leading two young girls down the tunnel of Queensland Country Bank Stadium. And as they exit, you can see the nostalgic words that have hung over the heads of all Cowboys who have run out onto the field. You're now entering Cowboys country. It was a powerful image because it showed the immediate feature of the club, but also the next generation who will now be able to follow in the footsteps of players like Romy. Oh, it just gives me goosebumps. I actually spoke to my friend and fellow NRL W enthusiast, and guys, you'll love her because she actually works for the Sharkies. Her name is Jess McCartney, and she's the head of government and community there. Jess has been involved in the sport since she was eight years old, and she's held a number of roles in the sport. And I thank her very much for her time and being on the pod. Hey Jess, I know you're absolutely stoked for the Sharks as they've just announced that they'll have an NRLW team in 2023. So congratulations. But with a wider lens on it, how good is it that the comp has grown from six teams to 10 next season? Hey guys, thanks for having me on. Um, yeah, it's a really exciting time to be at the Sharks for lots of reasons. And most recently that news is our club's entry into the NRLW for 2023. Um, we have such a huge junior league base um, and we've got a huge growing demographic of female players. Uh, so to be able to complete the pathway for them, knowing that they can start in the Cronulla Junior League as an under five, under six, um, and then head all the way through to the NRLW, uh, that's really something that's very exciting for the Shire um, and something we just really can't wait for. Uh, in terms of the broader competition, it's great to see so many clubs put their hand up um, and want to invest in women's rugby league. Uh, they can see the benefit in women's sport. Um, and I think it's a really scary time for some of the other codes because those codes who have kind of um, not had to compete for female participants in the past, um, knowing that you know we have this really exceptional platform now to showcase female pa uh, pathways and development and um, opportunities in women's sport, um, I think will be really scary for them. So. Um, yeah, really exciting time and really looking forward to seeing the girls in the black, white and blue. Thanks, Jess. And as a woman who's so passionately involved in the sport, how happy did it make you knowing that four more clubs have made a real investment into the pathways for the women's game? Uh, for me growing up, I played, uh, I think, under sevens to under tens. Um, there was never going to be a pathway for me. And um, knowing that those little girls are in the same situation, now there's going to be that complete pathway is really exciting. Um, I think getting the license, you know, is only the start of the journey in terms of the club's investment. Um, we really now have to work very hard to um, to deliver a really good experience for the female athletes. Um, we need to make sure that we're providing pathways, not just on the field, but also, uh, you know, in coaching um, and off the field as well. Um, so it is really exciting, but you have to do it. If you're going to do it, you have to do it right. Um, and we're really looking forward to providing that experience for the women uh, where they feel valued, respected, included, um, and so that they can do their best um, and bring us home an NRLW Premiership. Thank you so much for your opinions, Jess. You're absolutely awesome. So that's right. There's actually a men's team that I need to talk about. <laughs> the Cowboys played Manly down at Brookvale on Friday night. Now, if you watch this game, but you turned it off at the 70th minute, you probably still think that Manly won. Spoiler alert, you'd be dead wrong. <laughs> yes, that's right. With just over seven minutes to go, the Cowboys, who were down 26 to 12 and looked like the Sharkies had sewn this game up, well, they came back to score three tries to win the game. It was absolutely incredible. Now, here's the thing, and let this be a warning to all the other teams. The Cowboys are super fit this year, fitter than the majority of the other teams in the competition. And I can back that statement up by looking at their second half performances this season. They have been able to hold teams to zero on multiple occasions or continue to pile on the points in the final 20 minutes running away with games. In this game, yes, they conceded 16 points in the second half, but that is as many as they have conceded in the second half of their last nine games combined this season. Pretty amazing. 
The moment that sealed this fact for me was actually watching Val Holmes run about 70 metres to score the winning try. He passed two players on his way down the sideline and no one was able to catch him. Not one player in that manly team was able to mow down Val. They simply didn't have the legs to get there. So if the Cowboys are down on the scoreboard, but within striking distance, they will come home strong in the last 15 to 20 minutes when the other teams are starting to tire. This is their wild card this year, their fitness. They have alluded to how hard the preseason was, but I think they've really been keeping how tough it was under wraps. Um, they really were in the front of the competition with their fitness before the season even started. Everyone else is now in catch up mode. So there you go, that's my little pearl of wisdom for the day, but you can take it to the bank that the Cowboys can and will be able to steam home in other games this season. We did not get out of that trip to Sydney unscathed, however. Unfortunately, we lost Ruben Cotter before the game had even begun, and he's now been ruled out for the next four to six weeks with a grade three hamstring strain, which is an absolute bummer. But he has been a busy boy lately, so maybe this was the universe giving him a few weeks at home with his partner and their new baby, Sonny. We also lost Hamaso Tabuai Fidel during the game to an HIA rule. Hopefully he'll be okay. We haven't heard any bad news from that. So we'll take that to mean that he is actually fine. So there's actually a buy round next week. The next time the Cowboys play, it's going to be up at Queensland Country Bank Stadium and it's going to be against the Broncos. You can bet your bottom dollar that this game's going to be an absolute cracker because they always are. I'm actually going to make my annual pilgrimage to Townsville for that game. So I'll be able to report back from sunny Townsville with a cocktail in hand from Seabar. I like her. I like her. She's, she's going on me despite the obvious, you know, negatives of being a Cowboys fan. Dan, talk to me, Terry. A little bit of a different top sport this week. Yeah. Now, it's just, uh, it's good to know that, you know, you and I went very different on our tips last weekend. You've now tied it. We're back. We're level peggings for the run home on our tips now. Fantastic. It's going to be a few different this week too. I just have a feeling. Definitely not pre-arranged. I have a feeling. We start Friday night in Canberra. Chilly Canberra on a Friday night. And they have put the New South Wales women's against Queensland. Yes. Down there. NRLW state of origin for us. This is a highlight fixture. The, the NRLW kicks off after Origin, months after yeah. Origin usually, but we've got, we're coming in off a bit of a different, and mm -hmm. I, I like it. Because this is 2022 season yes, now, we just so had the 2021 grand exactly. final. Exactly, so we've had players play themselves in to positions which yep. we haven't had before. I'm looking forward to this. Yeah. It's good to see that the game's in Canberra. We've seen a couple in North Sydney over, which was great. We saw mm. Queensland the last game. Uh, it's back in the uh, neutral territory. Yeah, really. neutral territory. Yeah. This, this really opens it up. I love the look of the Blues side, mate. I, I'm quite confident we'll, uh, we'll wrestle it back. The Blues back on top. Nah, Queensland 13 plus in this one. Oh, 13 plus. Yeah, easy. <coughs> easy. Blues. Easy done. Blues. Easy done. I'm going to go back. I'm going to go back up uh, by one after this. I'm so confident. Don't on that. like it at all. Three o'clock uh, Saturday afternoon mm. in New Zealand. Mm -hmm. Finally, get some footy back in New Zealand. Good to see. Good to see. What a return game. What a return Ooh. game. Yeah, it's better than the Warriors Tigers in a couple so. of weeks. I see the New Zealand Kiwis against the uh, Pride of Tonga. Oh, this is the this is the highlight for me. The, I can't teams. believe this. I can't believe this game isn't the headline act. Uh, it, it's for a New Zealand audience because you've got to remember it's five o'clock over there. But like, how many people are going to watch this game and then look at the other two and go? Meh. Yeah, look, this this is definitely. I'm going to be one of them. This is the highlight for me. Mm -hmm. I these sides. Now I'm going to go controversial because Tonga have had the wood over the Kiwis the last few times. I think this is the best Kiwi side we've been seen named in years because the halves pairing is so good. Mm -hmm. Jerome Hughes best finally gets in the competition. That. I agree. Dylan Brown, your partner, that is a halves combo. Yeah, look, up until this season, I haven't really thought that much of Dylan Brown. And whilst I still don't, his form is... Blistering. Very good for Parramatta at the moment. He's earned this call-up into the New Zealand team. The back line... Ronaldo Mulatalo makes his rep debut after yeah. being ripped off last year. And I, I just... I think this... I think the Kiwis are going to be too much for him. I think... 
all the pride and passion, the crowd's going to get him. I don't know, I mean, I know that there's going to be a lot of It'll Tongans It'll be 50-50 well. split. Yeah. Now, the crowd is going to be the height because the Tongan crowd, they sing. And it's going to be like, it's going to be like nothing else. So I'm really excited. I think the Kiwis get him. I don't think it'll be a blowout. That Tongan side is ridiculously good. No halves, though. No, um, yeah, no compared to the, the New Zealand, mm. I think that's where this game's won. So it's good, it's good to agree, Terry. Yeah. Kiwis 1 to 12. Kiwis 13 plus. Uh, 5.30, we have uh, Toa Samoa taking on the Cook Islands. I think this one's going to be a beat down. On paper, perhaps, but this Cook Island side is very, very good. Lots of NRL, you know, fringe fringe reserve graders, a heap of Queensland Cup and New South Wales Cup players that you're going to see. And Vert are still looking for some fillers. So a lot of, uh, I think it's going to be a lot closer than, than many predict, but you'd be silly not to tips. Yeah, Samara are going to take this game and take it quite comfortably. For my, I think this is now... You know, Samoa will be looking at the players in origin going, well, is Papali going to make the Australian team? If not, can we pinch mm -hmm. him? Uh, Jerome Lua obviously will be their halfback leader, probably captain uh, of, of the side going forward as well. But I think they're going to have way too much. As you said, the Cook Islands, there's some good players in there, but it's a lot of fringe players as well. Uh, I'm going to pick Samoa in this one, 13+. plus. Going with Samoa, 13+, plus, 100% agree. This Samoan team's a little bit different to what we're going to see. Glad you mentioned that. In the end of year World Cup, it's going to be much stronger come World Cup. But this is a good hit out for them. I think they get the chocolates. Uh, look, and you know the main event uh, on this Super Saturday of Rep Football, a PNG versus Fiji. Dan, look, this is uh, put this game on at three o'clock, please. I it's it doesn't it lacks the the star power of the early games, but that Fiji side again, really army kick out, monster. The halves again, like the halves it's going to be boring happy. football. The halves are lacking compared to the elite sides, and I mean, that's NRL based. You know, look at the Tigers, you look at the, the elite halves. Mm -hmm. And I hate to rub it into the Tigers. No, but it's always fun to kick them. It certainly is, especially when they're down. I'm looking forward to this game because I, I love, look, the Fijian pre-game is a highlight in itself. All of them are going to do something special before the game starts, which the cultural significance is incredible, and it really gets the spine tingling, and gets goosebumps. Oh, and I mean, we've seen the Fijian players when they sing the national anthem, they cry. They cry, you know, it's, Kevin Aguama has been yeah. like, you can put him on a poster because it is a genuine highlight. It's hard to see New Guinea matching the Fijian strike power, mm. But you want to talk about weapons out wide. Yeah. This New Guinea side are going to cause some issues. I mean, in, in the past, like the, the PNG team has been the, the number four ranked team in the world and have dispatched yeah. a Fiji. Um, I don't think they're going to, no, though. the tables are turned a little bit. Yeah, I think Fiji have got a little bit of talent coming through now. Uh, I'm going to pick Fiji in this one, 13+. plus. Yeah, look, I've yeah. got 13+, plus every game. No, I'll, go, I'll go 1 to 12, a little bit of suspense. And uh, the main event. The Sunday. genuine main event. Yeah, Sunday night. Uh, Must win Perth. for the Blues. In Perth. Now, you and I both tipped that the Blues, or predicted, although I tipped Queensland, we both predicted the Blues go in 1-0 up. Uh, Queensland with the incredible performance in Sydney in Game 1. They take the 1-0 lead into Perth, mm -hmm. and we'll be looking to close this out before going up to Queensland. Uh, and I think Cameron Munster is going to get them across the line like he did in Game 1. He's the best player in the game. Undisputed, and I will not hear any arguments to the contrary. I think this is the game. Please, please be the game where Nathan Cleary finally finds his his feet underneath him at origin level. If we get done here, us being the Blues, Nathan Cleary is the new Mitchell Pearce. I think you scrub and you start again. He got a victory last year, but that Queensland side was not what it is this year. No, look, now a few injuries creep, creeping into the Queensland team. Ruben Cotter, uh, a big out. Um, Patrick Carrigan... People are saying Patrick Harrigan needs to be elevated into the 13. No, he came off the bench and was absolutely incredible. And we need that punch for mine. Jai Arrow slipped straight into Same. the number 13. Same. Now the wing spot is up for Xavier Coates. I've said Corey Oates, but it sounds like they're going to go with Murray Tuolungi. I don't hate it. Can't go he's, wrong with that. He's got that combination with Val Holmes. Yeah, look, Hamill was the other one that was in. I believe he is under an injury cloud. But even so, I think... H -I yeah, HIA, you won't have enough time. I think he's, I think he's third. Yeah, yeah. I, I really do as well. I think it's a little bit harsh on Corey Oates. He's scoring tries just for fun at the moment. He's making a lot of metres, but again, the Cowboys, third in the competition at the moment. And I think, you know, and it's great from Billy Slater to turn around and go, well, Val Holmes is my left centre, and Murray Tuolungi is a left winger. Let's just put that combination there. And it literally won the Cowboys the game against Manly. It did. And I think that's what got Murray home. That left combo against the right-hand combo from Penrith is mouth-watering. Yeah. 
And I look, I'm going to tip the Blues because I think they, well, they have to win this game. And I think that carried in. Nathan Cleary, again, please, we cannot do another Mitchell Pierce. No. Uh, I'm going to pick Queensland on this because they will win and want to go for the whitewash. Fair enough. Blues for mine. Yeah. Jerry. Talk to me, Dan. It's time to talk some black, white, and blue. We're in the winner's circle. We won on the weekend. I don't want to hear any negativity. There's no Even negativity coming. the game come. was horrible. There's no negativity coming from me from this game. No, there should be. Well, I'm going to go against you on the negativity. Now, you tell me why you think it should be negative, and I'll try and counterpoint you. We were pretty bad. We were. Now, let me, let me flip argument. this to you. Yeah. We were really bad. And for mine, when you're really bad and you win, this is where Fitz has got more to work with. That's a good point, a yep. very good point. Uh, I did see a lot of people say, if this wasn't the Titans, we lose to any other team. I don't necessarily agree with that. No. I think we played down to them, mm -hmm. but this performance was terrible. Yeah, now, the, the conditions were perfect. We can't take anything away from that. There was no breeze, there was no rain, there was no snow, it wasn't 50 degrees. So the conditions had nothing to do with no it. No excuses. Yeah, no excuses there. It was just a bad performance by Cronulla, yet they still won. Now, had we gone up there and won 42-6, to six, as everyone wanted us to do, the only winners out of that are the fans who watch the game and go, well, we dusted the Titans by 30 and put 30 on our for and against. Fitz has got nothing in the next week where the players have it off and then, and then they're you know, going up for a three-clock game against the Bulldogs. There's nothing for him to turn around and go, well, we need to work on this. Or we, you know, and he might take his foot off the pedal as well, but he's going to see a team that didn't respect the football, didn't respect their opposition, got caught in a dogfight. Oh, and now this is, you know, the Titans were Cronulla of old who yeah. just drag you down and try and beat you when you capitulate. Now, lucky Cronulla didn't capitulate, look like they were going to. But for mine, this is the game where Fitz can turn around and go, well, there's obvious areas that we need to improve on, and we're fourth. We are fourth. Mm. It's, it's kind of says a lot about the, the quality of opposition. Discipline mm -hmm. is such an issue. I don't know what it is with that club. You know, I, I love Cronulla, but my greatest regret in life is supporting Cronulla because every time Nico Hines pins him down, kicks, leads a chase, he and Moylan, got him in the corner, you know there's a penalty coming. You know we're going to do something dumb, it happened against the Titans. We pinned them down. We were 10 nil up or something. Mm. We had the game won. You know, you force an area score. It's game over. Titans aren't coming back. Give away a penalty. They go up. We concede a weak try to Bo Firma. Mm. I'm sick of it happening, Terry. Yeah, and look, it's the same as well. I was, I was chatting with um, a few people offline, and it seems that Braden Trindle gives one every week, right? And now, in the, I, I've been nor here nor there on Braden Trindle. I don't think that we're doing him any services oh, to his career, having him for 20 minutes off the bench. But literally... His first involvement in the game was sticking his hand out like he was a goalkeeper on a wayward pass that he didn't need to touch because it was fourth tackle. Again. Gave the six again. We were lucky that the Titans turned the ball over. And then they turned the ball over. Nico Hines pins him in the corner. And for some reason, he goes and jumps on as the second man in and gives a penalty away. Now, I, I don't get it. It's a lot of enthusiasm for him, but... These are the things that Fitz himself needs to work on and just turn around and drop this utility play because Trindle playing for New South Wales Cup at halfback mm -hmm. is better for him. We had no leadership against the Panthers in the New South Wales Cup game on the weekend. Absolutely none. No. Didn't have a halfback to steer us around. And he comes on with no position. He doesn't come on at hooker. He doesn't come on at halfback. He comes on as a forward and we lose our size. We do. I don't get it. It's, it's going to be a discussion point for the rest of the year. Going from a negative to a positive, Royce Hunt. Oh. Royce Hunt had his best game in Cronulla Colours. Dara, his best game of his career this past weekend. He was a monster in minimal minutes too. Mm. He weighed, made the most metres of any of our forwards. Yeah, he did, yeah. He looked like a starting front rower. Yeah, I was really, really pleased for Royce as well. He, you know, that knee injury that he had was, was a shocker. Yeah, so and he's yeah. come back from it really, really well. 168 metres on the weekend, no errors, made his tackles. A lot of post-contact metres too. He's yeah. dragon players. Yeah, I was really, really happy for him. Would have been my man of the match, but uh, my man of the match was Matt Moylan. Matt Moylan is in arguably career-best form. Career-best. He could have had two tries if not for Teague Wilton getting in the way. Should he had two tries. Teague... That was a terrible call by the bunker. 
It was because he's a... Now, technically, he was in front of him, but when contact was made, he was a support player. You tackle a support player, that the onus is on you as a yeah. defender. Should have been a try for mine. I agree with that. Mm. But, you know, letter of the law, okay, got it wrong. Patrick Herbert tackled Teague Wilton, then turned around and was like, oh, Teague's in my way. That's your fault, brother. It, it, it 100% is. I, I can't argue with you. Yeah. But Moylan, he wants that contract. And I'll tell you what, every single week... It's getting close to where he's given us no choice. We have to re-sign Matt. I'm not giving him two years, though. I'm still, I'm staunchly on the one, and I don't think Brisbane, I've seen what Ezra Mann has come out and shown, are going to be keen to sign him for two years anymore. But Moylan has to the, be there next year. The might. The might. I, I can't argue again with you there, Terry. You're just, you're just too good tonight. But Matt Moylan, speaking oh. of good. Oh, hail the great man. He's back. Hail, he is. And isn't it funny where the years that, he was injured playing fullback. Everyone was like, it's because he's a 5'8 now. He's 5'8. He's played every game this yeah, year. Yeah, it's funny what happens when players play their same position. Mm. Let's get into an argument, Terry. Mm -hmm. Sif Talakai, I'm over the centre experiment. I'm not. He's our best centre. By far. Mm. By far. Mm. Okay, what he gives in attack is tremendous. Mm -hmm. he's, a, he's a weapon out wide. Did blow a try on the weekend where he didn't move it quick enough? He did pass the ball to Ronaldo as well, yeah. yeah but Jesse Ramian blew two. Uh, possibly three. Sione three. should have scored four tries. Should have. I don't know whether, you know, Sione owes him lunch money. He didn't pay up and Ramian said, no, nah, not this week, mate, because Ramian had glue on his hands. And I, I think... Cam and then the one the pass he did throw, it went into the crowd. It, it just, it wasn't good. But that's no. going to come. We need Talakai in the middle. His best runs came in the middle where he's destructive. Now, I totally get your point that he should be playing 80 minutes. Perhaps it should be on Nakora's edge because this is this week I flip and I flop, and I flop this week. Well, I don't, I don't see the point in taking him off the left edge at the centre to put him on the right edge when, you know, Connor Tracy is all heart, mm -hmm. but he's not, he's not Sifu Talakai in the centres, right? He's not. Now, the, I, I'm not going to take our best back and put him in the forwards just because our forwards don't want to have a go. Get rid of those forwards and go and buy some guys like your Oregon Kafusis who made 138 metres for Parramatta on the weekend. We've, for some reason, we've let Paul Vaughan go to Warrington. He was right there for the taking. Go and get those kind of guys who want to go and have a run and leave a bloke who is the most destructive ball-running centre where he is. Defensively, his stats were good. But As a missed a tackle for two weeks. No, but he stood there and watched a player run past him. Not a missed tackle, but they, now, with the greatest respects to the Titan centres, they are average. Diabolical, yeah. I'm trying to be nice here. They are disgustingly bad, and he got stood up twice. That can't happen against good centres. And he, Katoni Staggs bathed him. Katoni Staggs didn't bath him. I, Def defensively, Katoni Staggs was in his face, but if you have a look at the, the metres... The stats were good, but his runs are coming in the middle of the field where they should all come. Yeah, no. Uh, I, I can't have that there. We are a worse team taking Talakai out of centre and putting Connor Tracy there. I disagree. I'll tell you what, we should take this to Finns up this week. We should, and we will. We will. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another episode of Rugby League Outlaws brought to you by Punctured Media, good friends at Top Sport, onelittlefootyfan.com.au and the Stubby Club. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Check everybody out. Give them some love, whether it's Dan or I as, as well. Whatever. Give you can give us comments. a follow, give us a trash. What about Cynic? Who is great he? St great stuff in the comments. Just keep an eye out. Keep it up, mate. And Dan? Rep round, baby. I love it. Rep round, baby. Baby.